Welcome to my demonstration video in which we are going to learn how to determine the side of upper limb bones. So let's begin. Clavicle, it is the horizontally placed long bone of the upper limb. It shows medial sternal end and lateral acromion end with a curved shaft. Medial end is broader than the lateral end which is flat. Shaft shows S-shaped curvature from medial to lateral side. Based on that, it is divided into medial two-third and lateral one-third parts. Medial two-third shows anterior convexity, whereas lateral one-third shows anterior concavity. On the inferior aspect of the shaft, there lies a bony tubercle known as conoid tubercle. From the tubercle towards the acromion end, there lies a bony ridge known as trapezoid ridge. On the medial side of the tubercle, there lies a shallow groove in the middle of the shaft known as subclavian groove. Trapezoid ridge, conoid tubercle and subclavian groove lie inferiorly in anatomical position. Keeping these points in view, let's see the side determination of the clavicle. Keep the broader end of the clavicle medially. From there, convexo-concave curvature of the shaft should face anteriorly. Trapezoid ridge, conoid tubercle and subclavian groove should face inferiorly. Which means here the bone is right-sided clavicle. Scapula. It is the triangular shaped flat bone of the upper limb. It has three borders, lateral, medial and superior. Lateral border is thicker than the medial and superior borders which are thinner. It shows three angles, lateral, superior and inferior. Lateral angle shows a shallow cavity known as glenoid cavity or glenoid fossa. It has two surfaces, ventral concave surface and dorsal convex surface. Dorsal surface shows a bony shelf-like projection known as spinous process of scapula. which is a triangular shaped bony projection having base laterally, apex medially and a dorsal crest. Such process divides the dorsal surface into upper supraspinous fossa and lower infraspinous fossa. Spinous process continues laterally as a quadrilateral shaped acromion process. Which lies behind and above the glenoid cavity. In front of the glenoid cavity there lies a finger like projection known as coracoid process. Here is the glenoid cavity in front coracoid process behind and above acromion process. They all lie near the lateral angle of the scapula. Keeping these points in view, let's see the side determination of scapula. Keep the thick lateral border laterally. Identify the glenoid cavity, coracoid process and acromion process. Keep them laterally and above. Spinous process should face dorsally. Inferior angle should project downwards which means this bone belongs to right side. Humerus it has a shaft upper end and lower end. Upper end shows 
a smooth spherical head which is restricted by a constricted neck which separates the head from two raised bony tubercles smaller lesser tubercle and a larger greater tubercle both the tubercles are separated by intertubercular sulcus or bicipital groove in anatomical position head lies medially and intertubercular sulcus faces anteriorly coming to the shaft it shows three surfaces medially anterior medial surface laterally anterior lateral surface and posteriorly posterior surface in the middle of the shaft anterior lateral surface shows a v shaped roughened bony elevation known as deltoid tuberosity behind the tuberosity on to the posterior surface there lies a shallow bony groove known as radial groove or spiral groove coming to the borders lower part of the shaft shows two sharp borders one on the medial side known as medial supracondylar ridge and one on the lateral side known as lateral supracondylar ridge lower end of the humerus is broad end portion known as condyle of the humerus it shows medially a bony projection known as medial epicondyle it lies in the same plane with the head of the humerus opposite to that is lateral epicondyle which is smaller than the medial epicondyle above it continues with lateral supracondylar ridge rest of the lower end shows a smooth spherical capitulum laterally and a pulley shaped trochlea medially which shows a central depression and two raised bony margins they are called flanges medial flange projects more distally than the lateral flange above the trochlea there lies a bony depression known as coronoid fossa above the capitulum lies radial fossa posteriorly a deep bony depression known as olecranon fossa which lies above the trochlea keeping these points in view let's see the side determination head should face medially and above intertubercular sulcus should face anteriorly deltoid tuberosity on the antero lateral surface in the middle of the shaft more projectile medial epicondyle should face medially and olecranon fossa should face posteriorly which means this is right sided humerus radius it has a shaft upper end and lower end upper end shows disc like head which is smooth and articular shows concavity superiorly below the head is the constricted neck and below the neck a roughened radial tuberosity in anatomical position head lies above and radial tuberosity faces medially coming to the shaft it shows three borders in three surfaces one of its borders begin from radial tuberosity which is the sharpest border known as medial border or interosseous border its lateral surface in the middle of the shaft shows a roughened bony area coming to the lower end of the radius it is broader than the upper end it shows five surfaces anterior concave surface posterior convex and irregular surface which shows a prominent bony tubercle known as dorsal tubercle of lister on either side of the tubercle there are bony grooves lateral surface of the lower end projects more distally known as styloid process of the radius 
medial surface of the lower end shows articular notch known as ulnar notch of the radius Here is the inferior surface of the lower end which shows a triangular articular facet laterally and a quadrangular articular facet medially. Keeping these points in view, let us see the side determination of the radius. The disc like head should go above and the radial tuberosity should face medially. Sharpened interosseous border should face medially. In the lower end, Concave surface should be facing anteriorly and the dorsal irregular surface posteriorly with a styloid process projecting downwards and laterally which means this is right sided radius. Alna it has a shaft upper end and lower end. Upper end shows a hook like smooth and articular area known as trochlear notch which is restricted above by olecranon process and below by coronoid process. The area below the coronoid process is called ulnar tuberosity. Laterally the upper end shows articular notch known as radial notch of the ulna. In anatomical position trochlear notch faces anteriorly, radial notch of the ulna faces laterally. Coming to the shaft, one of its borders is sharp which begins from the radial notch and continues above with the supinator crest. The border is lateral border or interosseous border. Lower end of the ulna, it is smaller than the upper end. It shows two features, a smooth spherical head of the ulna and a bony projection called styloid process of the ulna. Both are separated by a bony groove. In anatomical position, head of the ulna lies below facing anteriorly and more laterally. Styloid process projects distally and faces more dorsally. Let us see the side determination of the ulna. The trochlear notch should face anteriorly and radial notch should face laterally. The sharpened interosseous border should face laterally. Keep the head of the ulna below and more laterally so that the styloid process of the ulna projects downwards and more dorsally placed which means this is right sided ulna thanks for watching